everybody. Yeah. Welcome to my talk about flamenco. Um, for the schedule, I was asked to shorten the title a little bit so it fits better on the paper. Uh, but it was actually titled Simpler, Simpler, Better, Faster, Stronger. Distributed Rendering with Flamenco version 3. Um, my name is Sieglin. I'm software developer at Blender Headquarters. And since January, we've been working on a new incarnation of Flamenco. And that's what this presentation is about. Um, please keep questions until the end. I hope we have time for, for super interesting questions. But I think the answers will make more sense once you know the, the bigger picture. So to give a bit of an overview, first we look at what is a render farm for the people who don't know yet. What changed since the previous incarnation of Flamenco? We'll do a five minute install and in getting things running. Um, we look at then, and that's why they're a bit separate, a little bit more in depth on two topics, the storage system and the job type system. And then I will tell you that we want developers to get involved. So for us, what is a render farm? Typically, th people think of this as like a complicated thing that's high tech and difficult, and then you think of something like this. <laughs> I was actually looking for like farm pictures and stuff, and I found that in, in Rotterdam, in the harbor, there is a, a floating farm. Uh, if you want to know more, it's floatingfarm.nl. I think it's a cool project. Um, and, and so with Flamenco, you can do something like this. But also, you can get something like this. So Flamenco is already useful if you only have one computer and you just want to queue up your render jobs and go to sleep and the next morning see what failed. So compared to Flamenco, to what changed? Well. Maybe you, you were there, some of you were, uh, some of you may have seen the video. Um, in Blender Conference 2019, I also gave a workshop, it was 60 minutes, and we barely got things working. And that, that was clear, something had to change in, in the structure of things, in the simplicity of things. So for the new Flamenco, we really sat down and started talking about what are the driving uh, principles behind this new new incarnation. And number one, simplicity. Every decision that we made in the design of Blender was mostly driven by simplicity. And that started by taking out all kinds of components, but it ended up also like not even requiring like a Postgres database or something to, to store stuff in. Like, at first I was arguing like against that, I was, ah, but it's easy. Just, Postgres is simple, you just have to get install Postgres, done. And then I tried to install it on Windows. <laughs> and I figured out like how many times you have to click next. And within the 500 next clicks, there is this checkbox that you may or may not have to check. And I still don't know what it means. And then somewhere in between, you have to choose an admin password that you have to remember and that you will never see ever again. And I, I, I got confused. I got scared of, of the process. So um, now I agreed. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. No database. Also, it should work offline. No more connecting to the cloud. No more sending stuff when you know, don't exactly know what to exactly where. Everything has to be local. It has to work when you're offline. When your internet connection goes down, your, your farm needs to keep working. Um, Transparency is all about, it should be simple to find out what the thing is doing. In one view, you should have the status of your farm and which jobs failed, which jobs succeeded, which are still in the queue. Um, and that leads us immediately to interactivity. Like that overview should be interactive. It should show the current status and not the status that it happened to have last time you refreshed the thing. Um, and then in the end, there's robustness, of course, like it has to work, it has to be stable, but also when things crash, which will happen because your scenes will be too heavy for that one machine, uh, it still has to keep running. And then we started looking at what is our target audience? Who do we make this for? Well, of course, for Blender users. 
but maybe not for the bigger studios. As Ton also said in his keynote, like Hollywood isn't really waiting for us. And there are so many more small studios, people at home, like one to 10 artists working on something. And this directly connected to the simplicity. So flamenco doesn't have any authentication because it assumes that like you can trust your colleagues and to not mess up and and not having authentication, not having to set up an authentication server and create accounts and manage all that made things so much simpler. Also, when it comes to the number of computers in the firm, yeah, roughly 100. I mean, we have tested, I think, on 12 or something. 100 will be fine, I think. Um, that order of magnitude, but not like 10,000 cloud machines all running at the same time. Um, for file sharing, just the stuff you could use at home. So in our studio, which is mostly Linux-based, it's NFS. Uh, but Samba or SIFS, like the, the Windows file sharing, should also work. We kind of assume it's all on one network. Probably it will work via VP VPN, but that's up to you to, to complicate matters that far if you want. Um, and then finally, Linux is really our platform of choice. It's open source, it's what we use, so it's also what we test with. Uh, but Mac OS and Windows should also be supported. This was the architectural overview of Flamenco 2. You have your own computer and then you have a Blender cloud with multiple things and then you can have hook multiple farms up to that thing and then you can have multiple databases and workers and everything. This is the new design. Your user, artist, runs Blender, has an add-on. That add-on talks to the manager. That manager is a process that is running somewhere on your, on your computers. The manager talks with the workers, instructs them what to do, what not to do. And all of them com can communicate with a shared storage. So that is where your, your render jobs will go, where the render output goes. But maybe also where the, the worker executable is located so that you can just shut them down, put a new executable in, put them up again, and then it all works. And this is what it looks like. Beautiful web interface designed by Francesco and by Pablo, and I think they did a brilliant job at it. Um, and everything that you see here is responding in real time to changes, so you don't have to refresh anything. The colors change, the text change. If you click on follow task log at the bottom, it will pop up and it will just be scrolling and showing you what Blender is logging. Um, and we made a system that can that tells the backend basically what you're looking at so that it doesn't send you all the info of everything and keep things a bit scalable. So that's a bit of an overview of, of where we are now and how we came to be here. So let's see if we can get this thing running. Uh, we'll follow these steps except for the gray ones because uh, I already did that. Uh, so I already downloaded Flamenco from the website We'll pick a storage, which is C, temp. Uh, I already have Blender on my machine. But we'll start from starting the manager. And now I will duplicate the monitors. Yes, so you guys see what I see. So here, uh, is this readable? Should I increase font size? It's OK. Good. Um, this is what you get when you download Flamenco. So you have Flamenco Manager and Flamenco Worker. One thing I still have to work on is getting a nice icon in there, but that's for later. Uh, I read me a change log and, and uh, a directory with tools that contains FFmpeg. Again, for the simplicity of not having to download FFmpeg for somewhere else and then have the right version that's compatible with the command line options that we use and, and just plonk it there. You start the manager and that shows you stuff and then opens a web browser, gives you the setup assistant, explains the structure of the thing, which we've just been through. Well, let's go. Path to a shared storage. Uh, C, temp, <coughs> flamenco. Usually this would be on a network drive somewhere. Um, for now, this is simpler. 
then choose which blender. Uh, because my laptop happens to run Windows, we have some code that checks which blender is associated with .blend files. So the suggestion you get is what you would get when double-clicking that blend file. Again, for simply, we want to have this for other platforms as well, but there it was a bit trickier, so we didn't get around to it. You can, of course, point it to whatever blender you want to use, but for now, let's just use the detected one. Yep, confirm. And now we're there. Because there is no render job yet, it presents like, hey, you don't, you're just starting, so I get the add-on. The add-on will have to know where the manager is running because it could be on this machine, it could be on any other machine. So I need to pass it the address, which is here. I just click on it, now it's on my clipboard. Get the add-on. This doesn't go to the internet, but the add-on is baked into the Flamenco Manager executable, which means that whenever you update Flamenco, you get the add-on with it. The only thing you have to remember is to upgrade it. So I've already prepared a beautiful animated Suzanne. And here we paste in the URL tells us Flamenco 3.1 has been found, and it also tells us where the job storage is located. And this is another one of those small, small improvements that we made. With the old Flamenco, you had to copy-paste that information everywhere. Now the manager tells the add-on, look, this is where storage, where, like, where files go. So that's good. I've configured it to render PNGs. Output doesn't matter because Flamenco overrules that anyway. And now here we have a flamenco panel. Job name, Pcon 22. Priority determines like when multiple things are queued, which goes first. You can edit that after submitting, by the way. And then this button is very new, and it's something that was so clearly wrong. Well, it represents what was so clearly wrong with the structure of flamenco 2. If we wanted to change how the jobs were structured, like I want to render this, how does that translate to actual render tasks that need to be executed? That had to happen on multiple levels, in multiple, like in the add-on if we wanted to add something new, and then in the cloud, and then also maybe somewhere else. And because it had to go into the cloud as well, that meant if we change something, it changed for all the users of Flamenco, which was really annoying because we didn't dare making those changes because it could be really disruptive for, for other studios. But also studios themselves couldn't adjust to uh, Flamenco to their needs. So instead, this button fetches the job types that are available on our manager, and we'll look later at how to extend and then change those. And it gives you a number of options, like which frames it defaults to the current uh, scene. The chunk size is every time that Blender starts to render a task, how many frames does it render? Uh, the render output route, uh, yeah, I see temp Flamenco renders this all right. Then add path components is for adding path components of the current blend file to the render output path. So if your blend files are stored in shot name slash, or, or scene name slash shot name slash whatever dot blend, and you set this to three, then the output will go to mm, slash shot name slash scene name slash whatever. And this is what it would look like. So the, you can't edit this property, but it shows here it's like the, the storage slash beacon 22, which is the job name. Then you get a timestamp, which is a magic string, and then the, the, the frame number. Submit to Flamenco. Job submitted. And now you can see it's queued. The hey, you don't have anything yet. Uh, get the add on here is gone. And we can see that it has no preview yet. This is the info. You can also see that that magic string for the timestamp has changed it into an actual timestamp. So you know where it goes. And we have a bunch of, bunch of tasks. Now double click the worker. 
Watch out Windows is fine. I made this software. Run it. It's okay. Now it should find, yes, there we go. It automatically found the, the manager. Even if it were on a different computer, it would still find it. You can see that stuff is already rendering. There we go. More frames are coming in. You can see everything live updating. And the final thing that's queued now is rendering a preview video, which is now also done. And here in render speakon 22 the timestamp there we have everything and the preview video and that is how simple it is now like last time 60 minute workshop barely got it working now click the click done i'm super happy and thrilled that we got that far Oh, by the way, if the auto detection doesn't work of the work in the manager uh, on the manager machine, stop Spotify and then restart the manager because Spotify is blocking that port that we use. <laughs> so now let's dive a little bit deeper into those two topics. And storage is a really big and really important one. Um, basically, what you want is you want it to be simple, of course. First principle should be simple. You want it to be efficient. You want it to be isolated, that every render job has its own isolated set of files. Uh, yeah. that, that's what, where we are now. Like, you have to pick two. So these are our storage options. You can do what I just did now, where the, uh, I didn't show that actually, uh, but you'll trust me on it. The blend file that we opened was already located inside that shared storage. And this is a, a common way in which studios work. Everybody just works on the same set of files on an ask somewhere and they want to submit to Flamenco. It doesn't need to copy anything because everything is available on the shared storage already. So it's super simple. It's super efficient because nothing gets copied. But you don't get that level of isolation that you may want. So in, with this, if while rendering somebody changes the texture, half of your render will have the new texture. And, might be good enough. The second one is how Blender Studio actually used to work uh, for quite a while. And that is also very simple. For every render job, just copy all the files. And we have some analysis going on that sees which files are necessary for that particular job. And then just copy all of that into the job directory. And then you have your isolation. And it's simple, it works, and we used it for years. Um, but it may Andy and some other people very unhappy because like for spring one of those big tall legged monsters was uh, one and a half gigabytes and we had five or six of them and that got copied for every render job. Um, so that's why it's not efficient. And then the last one is what I will dive in a little bit more and that's your Schumann storage system. It's not so simple which is why we have to dive into it with other sheets instead of just showing it here. But it is efficient in terms of storage because you, and, and it is isolated. Who's Shaman? You might know him. Of course, like, named after him. But also because that system identifies files by their SHA checksum. The only thing you have to upload to the farm is anything that the farm doesn't have yet, so new files. And a changed file has a different checksum and thus it's considered a new file because that's the only thing the system knows about it. So you upload everything the, the, the Flamenco storage doesn't know yet. And then once the rendering has to start, Flamenco will create the directory structure for you and create symbolic links to all the files in the storage. And that is super lightweight and still gives Blender access to the files in the location where it expects it and your render job can continue. So this is an overview of what that would look like. The dot at the top is the, the root of the shared storage. And then you have a file store with all these blobs 
because the, the final name itself is insignificant and it's just long numbers. And the final name itself is the, the length of the file in bytes because yeah, why not? And then below you see the shaman demo render job and those are actually the files that are necessary for that particular job. You can see that they're in a different color because they're not actual files, but symbolic links that point back to all these jobs. And in this way, well, we have all the property, well, almost all the properties except for that super simplicity that we wanted. This works super well on Linux. With NFS, it's no problem. Uh, Samba has certain extensions that make it understand symbolic links as well. Um, but Windows is still lagging behind a bit on understanding the usefulness of symbolic links. So there, we're running against some, some, some barriers. Um, the good news is that this system is technically only necessary between the manager and the workers. So if your storage supports it and the manager and the worker are on, on Linux, it's all good. The um, artists, they send in the files via a web call, just HTTP to the manager so they don't need to know about this system at all. So if your artists are on Windows and the rest is on Linux, it will still work for you. That's one thing. The next, oh yeah, oh, ha, huh. I missed that one in my list of things I wanted to talk about. But this is, this is connected to the storage, uh, the variable system. And the variable system is there to allow you easier configuration uh, but also multi-platform support. So for example, there's two variables that are supported by default, and that's Blender. And you can say, well, Blender for a Linux machine is there. Blender for a Windows machine is there, and for Mac OS it's there. Um, the, the, plot, the, the, the operating system names are just strings. So if you're running FreeBSD or, or Blork OS or whatnot, you can just type that in and it, it, will, it will work. And you can also just not type in anything for the operating system and then it will be for everything. So Blender args is the arguments that will be always passed to Blender by default. Um, this is the default, so run in the background and uh, say yes to running Python. You can also change that if, say, during a project that you're rendering with EV for the first time in the background on Flamenco and that new GPU subdivision for the viewport that doesn't really work well, you can just mm, turn it off. So this is a variable system. Um, when we look at the job types, we will see where that Blender and Blender args actually comes from, because those, those are used in those job types. There's nothing really special about this, except that Flamenco comes with default values for them for the default job types. But if you as a TD want to have your own variable system, like your own variables and values and use them in your own job types, completely free to use the system. Apart from this, you can also specify an audience. And the audience is workers or users. So if you want to have some variable when a user looks at it, for example, in the web interface, have one value, but the workers who might be running in the cloud with all different infrastructure need a different path, then that kind of thing is also somewhat supported. A little bit better in Flamenco 2. Still need to port it to Flamenco 3, but the idea is there. So these are one-way variables. Whenever that variable Blender or Blender args is seen, it replaces it. For supporting mixed platform uh, uh, stuff, we have two-way variables. And they look like number of variables. They have a name, they have a platform, and for that platform, they have a value. Except that these go both ways. To give it an example of that, let's say you have an artist working on macOS submitting a file that is on volume shared from ankle shot file of blend. And your manager running on whatever OS will store this because it recognizes that that prefix is the Mac OS value of that variable. So it will store it as that, as that variable. And then when a worker running on Linux gets it, it will replace it with a prefix for, for Linux, uh, for Windows. And because this system is made for path translations, it will also flip the slashes the other way. And that seems to work quite well. Then we get to the job types. And this is really at the core of, 
of, of flamenco, of how to translate, like which parameters to show to people when they try to submit a thing, uh, etc. So it's defined by a, a file on disk. Uh, it's a JavaScript file, um, and we've already seen it. So within that Flamenco 3 panel, I chose the simple Blender render, but there's more. There's also the Echo Sleep test. This doesn't do anything with Blender. It just echoes a message to the log and then sleeps for a number of seconds a number of times. Um, but it's great to test stuff with and to explain things with because it's so simple. So this is stored in scripts slash echo sleep test.js. If you want to override it, you can just next to flamenco manager.exe, you can create a scripts directory, plonk a file in with the same name, and it will override the built-in uh, job type. Or you can give it a new name, and then it, you will create your own job type. So this is a JavaScript file with a tiny hint of Python. Um, we'll see that soon, but, but it may get a little bit schizophrenic if you're not used to mixing languages in the same file. Um, but it defines things that are shown in the Blender user interface. And they, those can contain Python expressions that are evaluated within Blender itself. So this is that file. And all of these job types consist of two parts. Inspired by the Blender add-ons that always start with a be all info dictionary at the top, this guy always starts with a job type dictionary at the top. And then there's a, a compile job function that gets the job and that needs to do stuff. Is, is this font size okay, by the way? Good. So here you can see the things that we saw on, on the Blender's interface. You have a message that's of type string, it's required. Uh, the sleep duration is seconds, it's an integer, it's a sleep repeats is integer. And you can also pass more options there, which we'll see later. And this, like, this is the thing that I find so nice now that like, you can, on the manager, you can configure what kind of parameters a job has. And then compile job, all, they all work in the same way roughly. So you get the job settings from the job, you create, you author some tests. The, the author.task function has two parameters. The first one is the, the task name. Completely up to you, whatever is, is sensible to you. The second one is the task type. This is a freeform string, also again, what is useful to you, but there are a bunch of defaults like MISC and file management, I think, and FFmpeg and Blender. And with those, you can configure which worker can do which kind of tasks. So maybe you have a machine that can't really, really run Blender, but it can do file management, like moving files around and renaming things, or maybe it can run FFmpeg. And with these kind of things, you can configure that. It's not a huge system, but you know, it kind of works. So you've authored a task, then you add a command to it. The task consists of a bunch of commands, one or more. If one of them fails, the entire task fails. That's kind of the idea. And they are run in sequence. And these commands are what is actually implemented in the worker. So the worker knows how to do an echo command and which parameters to expect. And same with sleep. Then if you want to have one task depend on another, you can just tell it in that way. So first we want to have the message logged and then uh, all the sleep tasks are depending on that. But the sleep tasks themselves can be run in parallel on multiple machines. And once you have that task authored, you can add it to the job. And that's it. Then you have your render job or your debug job. Uh, let's look at a more complex example, the rendering. This is your job type. And you can see it has a lot more parameters than you saw in the, in the interface. So the simplest one is uh, frames. It's just a string. Is required because Flamenco needs to know which frames to render and which not. And you can see it has an evil key that is just a Python expression that will determine the value of that thing. You can still override it. You can, you can type anything you want in there. But if it's empty, then it will automatically fill it in. If you press the re-evaluate button, it will overrule what you typed in and replace it with the evaluation. And here we have the render output root and uh, the number of components to add from the path. And you can see they're visible only at the submission level. Because once this is submitted, 
uh, nobody really cares. You just want to know where the output is going to and not really how that was constructed. This is a way more complex thing that does all the thing you saw to combine those paths. And this is a compiled job. Oh, by the way, the rest is also, it's now hidden, but it's all grab, re repeats of the same thing. So Python expressions that get evaluated, get attached to those job settings that you can then later use in the script. Um, to give a, a, a popular, the answer to a popular question, if you want to change where your, your render output goes, maybe you want to include the scene name, maybe you want to include the camera name, maybe you want, then, then this is the thing to, to adjust. Um, if you want to render it from a specific scene within that shared storage, you use the simple approach without the isolation. You may want to include the scene name in there and then pass it to the blender. So let's look. Same thing, compile job function. And this is for the render task. So this loops over, yeah, this loops over the chunks of frames. The frame chunker, that is kind of a more complex thing. You don't want to write that every time, so that's built in. And this is what you would alter if you want to change the, the, the Blender argument. This is the executable that should run. These are the arguments that should, it should have. Then you can define some arguments before the Blend file, the Blend file itself, and the arguments after the Blend file. And this is also something that is new in the new generation. You couldn't specify, like you couldn't set, uh, define whether it was before or after the, uh, the blend file. So that is the job type system. What we haven't seen, but I will just briefly touch upon, there is a worker sleep schedule. So if you have artist machines that you want to use as a flamenco worker as well, you can input the, the work schedule of the artist these days, these times, and then Flamenco will sleep, and then when they leave, Flamenco will wake up and start doing stuff. Uh, there is, for failing workers, there is a whole system of block listing and auto requeuing. Uh, we had situations where one computer was too tiny and puny for that particular shot, and it would take a task, start running it, crash, fail the task. Oh, next task fail and it would run over all these tasks and, and fail the entire job. When that happens now, it gets onto a block list. It's no longer allowed to run that task type on that particular job. So even when it fails running, blend, oh, and all the things it failed before will be requeued for other workers to, to pick up. Um, but if it fails Blender rendering, it's fine to still run FFmpeg or move files around. And this is also where those task types come in. And finally, we, the, the core of the new Flamenco is an API based on OpenAPI, which is a formal description of these operations have these URLs, this expected input, these possible outputs. And you can feed that to a code generator. So the Flamenco worker is just built on top of generated code for that API in Go. Uh, the add-on is made on generated Python code for that same API. The web interface is JavaScript generated for the same API. So if you want to like, interface with Flamenco in any way, uh, this is the easiest way to do it. So as an overview, we've seen what is a render farm, what has changed in five Flamenco since the version two. We've done a five minute, I think it was even way less than five minutes, like super fast install. Um, we looked at the storage system, the job types, the variables, and I've told you that I will be telling you that we want people to get involved uh, so, uh, I want you. Thank you. And I've been talking for 35 minutes, which I think gives us 15 minutes for, for questions. Why is the executable size 50 megabytes? Why is the executable size 50 megabytes? Too big or too small? It's very big. It's uh, because there is the add-on in there, which is huge. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, the whole web interface is in there. The, the like, bunch of other files are in there. Uh, one of the reasons we chose Go for making these executables is that it's a statically linked executable. So there's a lot more stuff in there than for 
dynamically linked executables you will typically see. Um, but also all the assets are in there for the web interface, all the JavaScript, all the images, all the CSS, the, the add-on, the JavaScript code itself for the job types, but also it contains a complete JavaScript engine. So the JavaScript is running inside of the, the manager. So all of that combined is this size. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Ah, is there a cap on the priority range? Yes. I can tell you because it's, you cannot put it higher than 100 because I tried typing in 200 all the time and I was wondering why it messed up the hierarchy was just stating 100 as a cap, like between 0 and 100, right? Correct. And the higher priority is the higher priority. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It looks really user-friendly. Um, I don't have any uh, scripting knowledge. Is that required? So is there any scripting knowledge required to get this running? No. No, you can just, like in the, in the quick install, you saw it just, it just worked. If that works for you, good. Use it. Don't think about it. If you want to modify things, yeah, then you may need to get into the depths of things. So... Good question. Is it possible to distribute a still image? So cut up an image into multiple blocks and then have different tasks for different blocks. Um, technically, yes. Uh, so you will have to write your own job type for this. So it's not one of the built-in job types. It's really made for, for a video rendering. But I would love it if someone wrote that. I got, I'm now more focused on animation and rigging than on Flamenco. I still want to support Flamenco. When you come into the Flamenco chat channel, I will definitely help you out and answer questions there. Um, but development time is limited, which is why that. Um, but I think it should be relatively straightforward as long as you can figure out how to, like, which command line arguments to pass to Blender to make that work, to, to, it will basically set the render boundary to that particular image uh, or that particular part. And then you just have a for loop over all the possible little blocks and generate the tasks and then do some magic with another Blender insta instance that has some node groups or something to push everything together into one image. Um, and with a dependency system, that is very much possible to just run all of it. And when everything is done, run that final merging task. Yes? Um, you said there's a way to tag different machines to different like, uh, abilities. So how would that then happen? Would it also add like, it's to the YAML of the worker? The question was, how do you tag those different abilities? Um, so on when, like, it's in the doc ah, You're not seeing me. Um, in the documentation, it says w which file is where. Um, on Windows, this is an update how local Blender Foundation Flamenco. And there you have uh, Flamenco Worker SQLite, Flamenco Worker. No, I'm talking the wrong thing. This is useful, not what you asked for. A file sitting next to Flamenco Worker would, could, could have that. <laughs> So you can next to flamencoworker.exe, you can put a flamencoworker.yaml with configuration file. It's in the documentation, like m which structure that should have. Um, and there you can put it. Thank you. Um, is it possible to run two workers on the same machine or put a CPU on one CPU? Uh, is it possible? Yeah. yeah. Is, is it possible to run like multiple workers on one machine? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've heard people who had scenes that Blender wasn't parallelizing uh, particularly well, at least not to their taste. Um, so they just run like two or three workers so that it would run two or three uh, tasks at the same time. That's very possible. The only thing you have to take care of is that, well, that file that I accidentally went to, that is location of the credentials file. And that credentials file determines the identity of that particular worker when communicating to the manager. And of course, it's a fixed location. So if you run that worker three times, 
the manager will think it's the same worker. So you have to set, I think you have to pass a command line argument or set an environment variable. It's, it's in the documentation. That was also one of the things for this system. I wanted to have better documentation and we do. So that's, that's great. Uh, yeah. Would it be easy to create a third party standalone Python app to send a multiple job outside of Blender? From what, a yes. So the question is, would it be easy to just have something outside of Blender sending in stuff? Yeah. Uh, ish. Uh, for the Shaman, you need to know the Shaman protocol and, and use that to send in. But just sending, saying to a Flamenco, hey, there is the file, go render it. Yeah, that's super simple. Um, I think I can show a little example of that. So this is basically a curl command that sends something to the farm. So you could use this, or you could use the, just take a copy of the uh, generated Python code from the add-on, or run the, the, the Python code generator yourself, and then use that API. I would do that rather than write this, but this is just an example of, of how simple things are under, underwater. You had a question? Yes. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. So. How long does it work? Okay, so I, I will save in the microphone for the recording. Your first question was whether it's possible to split up frames not by by blocks but by sample count. And yeah, totally. Uh, Cycles has options for uh, chunking the, frame, uh, the uh, sample count. So you can say, I want it over, divided over 15 chunks, now render chunk number one, and on the next task, chunk number two, and then again, a final task to combine the things. Um, the second question was, how, like, what is the life cycle of a worker? Um, typically infinite until you stop it. Um, so at the studio, we integrate it with uh, systemd that will automatically restart it once it's shut down. So when we have an upgrade, I just overwrite the executable with a new version. I tell all the machines to, to, to shut down through the web interface of Flamenco, and then they automatically start up again. Uh, so even um, I'm searching through all my tabs to Flamenco. Um, so even when um, when asleep, so when I say now go to sleep, the process is still running, so that it can respond to wake up calls, uh, but it won't do anything. Also, something that we I didn't explain, but this list of actions that's pretty much the same as in Flamenco two. So you can tell it to shut down, you can tell it to shut down like now or after you've completed your current task so that you don't lose any render time. And the same with going to sleep. Uh, so I can now say, well, shut down. And there we go. And now that window is closed and we only have the, the manager left. Okay, so the, the, the question is how do you ensure that yeah. the version of Blender you use to submit the file is the same as the one running the render job? Uh, with Fluenco, that's up to you. Uh, so that's not a feature that is supported. Um, you could set it up by 
having a job setting that takes that version, puts it into a job setting, and then instead of just putting in that Blender variable, you could use that version to change the variable name, and then within your list of variables, you can say, well, Blender 3.0 is this, Blender 3.1 is that, Blender 3.2 is that, and then point it to the executable. So you can make it work, but it's not like an intrinsic feature of Flamenco. Yeah, this is what we do also. Like, yeah. Yes. How how easy is it to extend the, the user interface? How easy is it to extend the user interface, like the the web interface? Yeah. Um, is it possible? Custom, custom without like recompiling your own flamenco, it's not possible, uh, except for the 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 job type dependent bits. So, like the the job settings that you see here, that you can define whether settings are visible here or not, but uh, that's about it. Yeah. So that kind of leads into my question is, what job types are like currently available? The ones you've seen. Oh, just, okay, cool. Yeah, that's it. Because uh, we spin up at the minute loads of blank containers who will handle junk. I think it'd be cool to have it all centralized. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, if, like, yeah, and, and again, if you have interesting job types all written out and you think, oh, this is something that is generically usable, like tiled images or, or splitting up by samples. Uh, I'm, I'm really interested in like bundling this. Yeah. Um, so you've got a, like a JavaScript file that's, um, you know, potentially has errors in it. Uh, where would errors show up if you've got like malformation? Good question. Where would errors end up if that JavaScript file contains errors? Um, depend a bit on where. Um, it could be when submitting a new job because that actually runs that JavaScript. And if that throws an error because you have a throw, don't do that, uh, I'm incompatible with video rendering because I'm made for PNG files like we have here, uh, that would show up actually in the um, Blender user interface. So it shows, of course, in the, the log output of Flamenco Manager, but it also shows in the web interface. Oh, sorry, in the, the submission interface. And it's kind of nice because it also tells you which line on which file and that kind of info. Uh, will there be support for uh, uh, how to package Flamenco? Uh, for example, have a system-wide install instead of the more portable approach now where you unzip something in a file on the uh, executable files? Oh, good question. Like, will there be packages, like Linux packages in Windows installers, that kind of thing? Um, well, uh, last slide. Like, <laughs> I don't have that, the, the time to do it, but I think it's, uh, it's a super cool to just offer it and easier to use, install things. Yeah, so the question is how to handle multi-camera support with, within one blend file. Uh, that would, again, require you to make your own job type. Basically, copy the JavaScript file from the default and adjust it. Just add one more parameter for typing in the, the camera name and then pass that to the, the Blender command line as an argument to render from this camera. Thank you. And same for multi-scene multi renders from the same file, that kind of thing. Mm, good question. Is there any in interface for the workers locally on the worker to send it to sleep and such? Uh, nope. Uh, but you, the, there is a hidden feature that you can send a Unix, sig like a POSIX signal, user 1, user 2, to send it to sleep or to wake it up on Linux, which could be the basis for a separate user interface, but there is not at the moment. But um, 
I think it would be a cool feature to have some graphical user interface. I've been thinking about making it actually. Uh, but then you also have to think about like what on a headless system that may not have like a graphical interface to show that UI. Uh, so it requires a bit of thinking, but I think it's, it's a, a necessity at some point. Yeah. But they can always go to the web interface and just turn their worker off there, but it's a bit more cumbersome. Okay, so they, they can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, there is no authentication here, so they can just click on their own worker and uh, just say, well, uh, send to sleep. Then. That's what the US do at the moment. Yeah. So it's a public URL, so everyone can go in there and fix it. Okay. So let's do one more question and then we're only five minutes over time. Yeah. Could you imagine in the future um, being able to distribute uh, simulation baking? Oh, I would love that. Like, so adding simulation baking and those kind of job types, uh, I would love to see that. Like, but that is up to the people who need it to actually write it out and, uh, and share that. But I think it would be super nice to have some place where we could collect these job type scripts and, uh, and, and, and share them with people. So the answer is yes, you can do it, but you have to write your own job type. Yeah. 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 And th like, this is exactly why I wanted to have this job type system, because so many different questions actually get answered by, yeah, you can do this with just a little bit of JavaScript. And then we can share stuff and, and get it to work together. Thank you all so much. It's been great. Thank you.